Welcome to the lab portion of the configuring one-time passwords on Cisco routers lesson. Here's our topology such that it is basically R1 and R2 are 3725s running 12.4 code, whereas R3 is a 3640 running 12.3 code. Okay, so let's get R3 out of the way. The only reason I have this in there is to show you that if you're not running 12.4 code, this will not work. So if I do a show ver, which is short for show version, include iOS, this will show you what image I'm running. I'm running 12.3.14. So if I do a configuration terminal, uh, normally it's going to be username, and then you provide the username. In this case, we're going to use a vendor, and then one time. And now, normally I could hit question mark and get my iOS help. It says unrecognized command, and if we go ahead and look here, we can see that one time is not an option. So you do need to be running 12.4 code. Okay, thank you, R3. You've served your purpose, and we will ignore you for the rest of the lesson. We'll actually be doing all of our work on R2. If I do a show run, include user. This will show all the usernames that are currently configured on this device. And it'll show you that Packet Lab, Packet Lab is the only username password on there. And if I do a show run section line VTY, this will show you how the VTY lines are set up. And basically, we're using login local, which means anybody accessing this router through the VTY lines are going to have to authenticate using credentials stored in the local username database. So in this case, the only valid credentials currently are the, those associated with the username Packet Lab. Let's go ahead and say that we want to allow a third-party vendor access to our router. So we're going to go ahead and set up the username. And that username we're going to use today is going to be vendor. And you can see here, when I hit question mark to get the iOS help. Where is this guy? One time is present here and that is because we are running 12.4 code. So again you have to be running 12.4 code for this to work and then I'll go ahead and use one time and see what the options are here. And as I said in the slides basically password is unencrypted secret means that it's going to store, store this password in the running configuration as an MD5 hash. For our purposes we don't need to go that far so we're just going to use the password option. Just, just know that it is available and just know that I can't spell password. So we're going to set this up to, actually, I'm sorry, let's go ahead and set the privilege level. And it's important that you do this in the right combination because if I do one time, it's going to want the password. If I set up the password, Cisco, I won't have the option to put privilege at the end. So privilege actually goes between the username and the password. So we're going to set the privilege level to 15 and then set the one time password. Cisco. Now if I do a show run, include usernames, I should see that there are two usernames configured in the local database and there are, there's Packet Lab, which existed prior, and then our one-time credentials of vendor with the password of Cisco. So I will break out of running configuration and you will notice that I did not write this. So we've got R2 configured for our one-time password. Let's go ahead and tell it over there and it's vendor, not vetter. So we are now logged in. If we do a show user, we should see that we are logged in with the credentials of vendor. And when we do a show run, include user. Now remember, we had two usernames configured in here. If iOS did its thing the way that we expect it to, it should have removed this username vendor. And booyah, it did. So now we still have our, our old Packet Lab account is the only one on there. So we set up a one one time credentials. We've logged in. Say this is Cisco. Cisco can do their business. You know and then they get out and actually you know at this point they can write the configuration because they still have privilege level 15 so if they do a write at this point it will go ahead and you know everything works fine but now if they log out and we're back on R1 like oh you know what I forgot to do this go back in there vendor Cisco wah, wah, wah. thanks for playing it has removed that so they're not going to be able to access with that account okay I showed this in the slides but let's just do it here for completeness sake show you once again that we only have the single username in there which is packet lab so now I'm going to type username I'm going to use shortcuts I'm not going to type out all the words because that's how I roll still slow and inaccurate but slightly less slow I guess so now if we go ahead and up arrow and see our user accounts uh, just basically setting up what we had before we have two user accounts I'm going to go ahead and get out of that jump back over here I'm on R1 I'm telnetting to R2 but what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as packet lab with the packet lab if I could spell I bet you I misspelled it. <laughs> okay, so I logged in with Packet Lab. So I did not use the one time credentials. So now if I do a show run, include username, both sets of credentials will, will show up. So if you do not use these credentials, they will remain in the running configuration. So keep that in mind. Not a big deal. You might want to keep this in mind if you do give 
temporary access to a vendor say Cisco was supposed to go in midnight last night make a configuration change and you see your router the next day if you do a show run include username you can see that they obviously did not use this one-time credential or it would not still be in the running configuration and then for the final caveat what I did was I went back to R2 and I reconfigured the one-time credentials here I'll verify this with the show, show run include users you can see that they're both here now if I issue that same command but I take a look at the start not strat it's not a guitar startup config you can see that the only username present in the startup config is packet lab and that's what we want so when you configure this don't go ahead and write it I mean that becomes second nature for us as engineers as soon as you make a configuration to write it because I will show you why I will write it now I'll bop over here actually I was still logged in there okay it's written go ahead telnet and I will use my one-time credentials of vendor Cisco I'm in show run include users like I said if Cisco iOS is doing its job we should only have the one account there log out perfect so it worked great what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop over to R2 and unfortunately I'm doing this in GNS3 so I'm going to stop the router and then restart it and that's going to simulate a reload you can't really do a reload in GNS3 because it completely bones it up so we we'll wait for this to reload I'm going to pause the video okay and what I wanted to show you is that now if I do a show run whoops, include user remember we've used that one-time password we've logged in and we've used it and it was removed from the running configuration but now we've had a power outage or a reload or the router crapped itself for whatever reason it's come back up and it's loading the startup configuration into the running configuration so now if we take a look at our running configuration we see that we have the one-time credentials present which means that we potentially could have a problem because now they're not one time they're more than one time because now if I go back to R1 telnet and I may not have typed that right. Boy, I'm not doing well on the typing today. Vendor Cisco. There we go. So I'm in using that one-time password. That's a caveat. That's something you want to keep in mind is that when you configure this, you generally do not want to write this to the startup configuration because you want this to be used one time and then go away. Okay, one last scenario here. I went ahead and took out the packet lab and put the one-time password back in there. So basically what I have is the only credentials that I have for this router currently are going to be this one-time password. So if I go back over here, I'm just going to log out and still CISCO. Let's see if I can type it right. So I've gone back to R1. I've telnetted in. I've used my one-time credentials. Now if I do a show run include user, which should get all the usernames. Look at that. It comes back. We don't currently have anything enabled here as far as user credentials because we used it one time. Cisco said, okay, I punched your ticket. I'm now throwing it away. If I log out of here and try to get back in, vendor Cisco is not going to be working. And Packet Lab, of course. Just to show you, but it's not going to be working because it's not configured on there. And you want to keep this in mind because say that you work for a third party and you're configuring routers for Acme Corporation, you configure it, but you don't want or you don't have their user account. So you say, you know, hey, it's configured. You'll be able to access it at this, you know, IP address. Ship it to the site. They plug everything in, and you just tell them, hey, you know, when you log in, use vendor Cisco as your one-time password. If they don't go ahead and configure an additional account or set up, you know, their TACX, whatever method they're using for authentication, then they can orphan this router where you would not be able to get it in. This is a one time where, like I said a few minutes ago, that you don't want to write this. This might be the one time where, as you wrote this, then they could just simply turn the router on and off. It would load up with the startup configuration, and you'd have a second shot at that one time password, which kind of defeats the purpose. But one thing to note is throughout this whole lab, you did never see iOS pop up saying, hey, you're accessing this with the one-time password you may want to change the password or set up another account or when you want to log off be like, hey do you really want to log off because once you log off this user account is not going to be available anymore it's not like Windows where if you set the change password on next login as soon as you log in you have to change the password it's not quite like that and that makes sense from a security standpoint you, you may not want to have somebody know that they're using a one-time password but just keep in mind that whereas this feature does a nice bit of removing the password for you it can introduce some problems if you don't keep track of what's going on on your devices okay and that's going to wrap it up for this lesson thank you for joining me in the packet lab i hope this helps you on your route to becoming a networking god thank you